trying to make it better in certain aspects. Right, so Lake Kepia is one of the counties where a former governor bounced back after beating the current governor, Nderi Tumurethe, um, who also held a key position in Raila Odinga's national campaign team. Our reporter Fatia Noor talked with the outgoing governor on some, actually the former governor, Lake Kepia former governor, on some of the hits and misses of his leadership for the last five years. So in the 2022 general elections, you lost your position as a governor and you were seeking re-election. How did that make you feel? Oh, well, you, you feel sad, of course. I mean, nobody likes to lose. But remember, uh, these seats are not personal. It's not a, it's not a, a personal thing. Um, and you... Democracy is that your neighbor, your friend, your colleague, even your spouse, can have a different view from you. <laughs> That's what democracy is about. Now, you may feel sad that you don't have the same view as yourself, but you have to accept that view. Uh, because that's, otherwise, democracy cannot function. So obviously, as a human being, you feel disappointed. Uh, but that's the way it is. So what could you say, or what would you say are some of your accomplishments as uh, when you were the governor of Lake Kipia? First of all, there are many firsts that Lake Kipia has, has achieved in these last five years. We are the first county to be in a position to issue an infrastructure bond. Um, we have more than doubled revenue, own source revenue, in that period of time. We created uh, 22,000 new jobs in the economy of Laikipia. We transformed the Laikipia Health Service. You know, we have one unified service with 90 outlets. And basically the quality of service is uniform. The patient flow is uniform no matter where you go. And when you enter our service, we don't send you from one point to another. That, for example, if you need laboratory tests. We do uh, innovative things like uh, sample referral. Uh, in fact, that transformation made us both famous and infamous because I sacked doctors. You know, nobody had thought it possible to sack doctors. Mm -hmm. So some doctors refused to work about four years ago and I sacked them. And to date, it remains a big political question. How can you sack doctors? But I said to people, it's four years ago, move on. <laughs> you know, uh, done, dusted. But after that happened, I don't think you had a doctor strike since. Because as a leader, you have to be able to take bold action. It's not just about pandering to people's whims. Mm -hmm. And if people refuse to work, uh, you should not be putting them on a public payroll uh, if they're not interested in providing services. We became the first county to do leasing. Um, in the leasing of equipment, leasing of all kinds of things. And that put us, gave us the capacity to gravel nearly 3,000 kilometers of rural roads, um, an unprecedented feat. We, the infrastructure bond has allowed us to improve uh, towns. So we call the program Smart Town. Basically, you go to a town and plan it properly and pave the roads, create pedestrian walkways, create space for non-motorized traffic, do proper drainage, you know, just bring the, the space to sort of a reasonable global standard of, of living and use that then to attract business into those small towns and market centers. And that is how we've created jobs. Um, we also are quite successful in the arena of water provision of water. Um, we, you know, solely water project comes to mind. This is a space where Kibaki administration settled people at the southern end of Lake Ipia in a place called Solio. Uh, seven villages with about 2,200 uh, households. No water. And we're able to bring and connect all these households to water. Mm -hmm. um, we did something called the uh, Chumvi Makurian, which is now on the northern side. 
again taking water all the way to Doldo. Um, the Smart Town program now covers about 14 towns, all of which uh, you know now better planned uh, infrastructural development ongoing. But I would say my most proud program is uh, enterprise innovation and enterprise support that uh, was supporting small businesses, uh, you know, uh, be globally competitive. What are some of the challenges that you faced as a governor in Lake Kipia? I had a target to get to 85% of households having medical insurance. Uh, in the event I got to 63%, I was not able to reach my target. Why is that important? Because uh, when people, when uh, when there is disease, when there is you know sickness in the household, it is usually financially devastating. People end up using all their uh, assets to because of of of, of uh, sickness. And yet the solution is right there. It's it's insurance. Um, but in the end, we got to 63% of all the households in Nikipia have at least a basic health cover uh, from NHIF. Uh, we had hoped to get the Amaya soft, soft security strategy fully embedded, but in the end we were not. Amaya is, a, is a Laikipia, Isiolo, Saburu, Baringo. There's a little corner there where they all sort of meet or touch. And uh, in, in the place is called Amaya, or only three of them touch that point. What is the issue? Uh, banditry and cattle rustling and so on, insecurity basically. Uh, a lot of it driven by resource fights, but, but also some traditional problems. Solution improve educational uh, opportunities for, for young people in that region, um, improve the centers so that there is better commercial activity if you go to Suguta or Tangul Bay or Iwaso, you know, because without proper commercial activity, where will jobs come from? Right. What advice would you give the incoming governor of Laikipia? All incoming governors, I would really encourage them to pay attention to the handover notes and the handover report. So the outgoing government prepares Detail, a detailed handover report, complete with the most updated inventory of assets and liabilities. Now, the difficulty of any incoming that you would face is if you don't pay attention to that, you will make decisions on the basis of hearsay and what you've had. And then you can very easily make very bore decisions because the input the data the, the, that you have used to arrive at uh, your decisions is poor. You said you have a pending book. What is the book all about? The book um, is about economic inclusiveness. Uh, it's about some of the questions we were even discussing in our conversation. But what is causing stagnation of productivity? Because, you know, without an increase in productivity, you can't have an increase in real income. Um, and what is to be done to um, to fix that? And I believe myself that globally, many political scientists, uh, economists, and political leaders are misdiagnosing the problem. And you see, if you when you misdiagnose you will definitely apply the wrong treatment. And that's what you've seen in, in, Amer in North America, in Western Europe. Um, that misdiagnosis, what really is causing populism to be on the rise? Because look, this thing that was being sold around here in Kenya is not actually even innovative. It's not new. It's what was happening with Trump. It's what was happening in, in France, in, even in Germany. 
So now, retail chain Naivas Supermarket has relaunched his Naivas Nyayo Embakasi outlet in a 